Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we're starting the episode at the bottom of the ink farm that we built. We did part one of it yesterday, part two today is going to be all about the collection mechanism for all of this ink. Because believe me, there is a lot of ink to collect. I just came down here and picked up about a stack and a half immediately from all of the squids that had just happened to drop through the farm since I logged in today, meaning that we have one heck of a farm on our hands. The problem now is going to be actually collecting all of the ink regularly. So we're going to be setting up a collection mechanism down here today, and it's going to have a few special things about it. One of the things I want to introduce into this series at this point is shulker box collection mechanisms. Basically, a system that will automatically box up anything that we collect in it into a shulker box and basically load shulker boxes into the system so that we can take one out and there's always one ready to collect new items. That's the idea. So today we're going to we're going to do a lot of digging first of all because I want these squid to take full damage. I'm pretty sure they can take full damage and this is something I'm going to confirm when we actually have them drop through to a kill floor further down here. But we're at Y40 right now. I think we probably need to be at around Y20 for the squids to take full damage instantly. The main reason for that is just to clear them out of the world faster so that more squid have a chance to spawn further up in the farm. Otherwise, if they just hang around taking suffocation damage, we don't get the optimal rates because the squid just take a little while to die and it can't spawn new ones until the old ones are gone. So luckily I still have the beacon set up down here. We're going to dig down to Y20, hopefully not encounter too many lava lakes in the process. And I'll see you guys once we're down there. All right, we are now down here at Y23. And I think this is probably going to be enough. See that squid up there? That's probably going to drop down into this space any second now. They are swimming <laughs> occasionally a little bit freely between these. Yep, there we go. Bam dead instantly. That's, <laughs> that's, that's working out pretty well. One of the ways we could optimize this farm in the fullness of time is to actually take out some of the checkerboarding, to take out the interstitial water sources here and there so that the squid, once they swim out of a water column, literally have nowhere else to go. I've also built this all a little bit like I built some of the layers offset because I wasn't super careful with where I placed the fence gates. And so sometimes they when they when they drop down, they actually drop onto another water source and then they can swim a little bit in that. But still, we're getting tons of ink. So while this farm is not completely optimized, I imagine a few people might want to rebuild it differently for more efficient rates. It is still getting me tons of ink. Like I'm, I've got like two stacks of ink just waiting on the floor here to be picked up. So anyway, we've now reached the point at which we've dug down far enough that even if a squid drops from the lowest level of this, it's still going to die instantly from full damage, see? So this is where we need to start preparing our kill floor. So there are a couple of different ways we can do this, and I wanted initially to make this entire floor out of hoppers so that we could either kind of cover them over with slabs and the ink would just be collected into a hopper system, or so that the hoppers could be completely uncovered and still just provide the killing floor, and then everything would be channeled into a single collection system. The problem with that is that it's a lot of resources, right? Like, we're talking a 16 by 14 area of hoppers that's like roughly 220 hoppers, give or take. So yeah, look at the amount of blocks in here. Each one of those would have to be covered by a hopper. That's still quite a lot. So we are still going to do this with hopper minecarts. However, there is a problem with leaving minecarts running. They lose all momentum when a chunk unloads, and if they get stuck in the middle of a rail, then it becomes very difficult to reset them. So what we want to do here is create a system that we can turn on and off from a control room, which is preferably going to be the room that we AFK in 23 blocks away from the farm so that squid can spawn here in the first place. Which is why I've got my redstone box on me, and I don't have a great deal of powered rail. So I think we need to go and get ourselves some powered rail. What I do have a lot of, though, is hoppers. So what I'm going to do is dig out an area here, and the last three sections, the last three blocks that the rail is going to end up on, are going to be hoppers. And so those will drain the stuff out of the hopper minecarts as the minecarts travel over. So the minecarts don't need to stop a whole bunch. They will only need to stop when we turn the system off. So what we're going to do is dig out, I guess, yeah, a three wide section. We're going to have them all channel into a hopper roughly here in the center and then connect the hoppers on either side so that they all feed into the same system. So ultimately, these hoppers here are going to be delivering the ink constantly. We're probably even going to get a little bit of ink in there now, yeah, <laughs> because some of the squids are going to be falling directly onto this set of hoppers that we've set up. The idea is that if we shift click and place some powered rail like so, we can actually bring 
all the powered rail across the room and then have it come back across the hoppers like so. And then a hopper minecart will pick up any ink that lands on the floor over here. Given the size of this place, we're going to be running 14 hopper minecarts all at once. And I think that should work. It seems like a little bit of an overkill thing, but believe me, it's not. And oh gosh, placing the rails in here is going to be a nightmare. You know what, just to avoid the weird rail placement thing, I'm actually going to have the storage system go over here because that way, when I place the rails side by side, they're not just gonna want to connect. <laughs> I think I'll do it that way. For once, we'll use the east-west rule and we'll actually build the storage system that way around. So like I was saying, we're going to have hopper minecarts running on these powered rails across the room, across the entire room, so that they bounce off the opposite wall. We're going to be powering these rails from the middle of the room using redstone blocks, mainly because that allows us a decent transmission distance so that we will get redstone power to all of the rails in this, but also to keep the power sources away from the hoppers, just in case anything were to lock one of those hoppers, we wouldn't want that to prevent transfer of items. But that should be nice and simple, we'll just place a line of redstone blocks across the room here. Okay, I'm out of powered rail, at least the powered rail that I had in my redstone shulker box, so let's Let's go get some powered rail. All right, I'm back and with enough powered rails to hopefully do the job. If you guys ever want powered rails, if you ever want gold in general and you don't have a gold farm yet, just go to a Mesa. Gosh, there's a lot of gold there. <laughs> I really understated in the first video I did about Mesas quite how much gold there is in them their hills. So I think we should be able to lay out the rest of this powered rail. Basically, all I wanna do is set up a long line of powered rail, have one rail that isn't powered, and then a rail beyond that that is powered that we can switch on and off, allowing us to manually control when the minecarts are going. The difference between this and the slime farm, which is the last time we made a powered rail collection system for a kill floor this large, is that the slime farm operates regardless of how far you are away from it. I mean, the slime farm operates if you're within 128 blocks of it. The squid farm won't do that. The squid farm will only work really if you're between 23 and 32 blocks away from the farm. As such, it doesn't really make sense to leave the minecarts running constantly the way it does with the slime farm, because the slime farm just collects stuff passively in the background while I'm doing other things in that area. The squid farm is gonna be a very specific destination for us. And to that end, it just makes sense to have things a little bit more controlled. And it looks like I'm actually about half a stack of powered rail short, give or take. So yeah, I guess back to the Mesa then. <laughs> so I finally got enough powered rail together to set up this entire kill floor. And like I said, we've got a row of powered rail at the back here that is currently unpowered. Thankfully, the transmission distance of this redstone block actually ends here. So we could make all of this powered rail if we want to and just have it be powered by the circuit we're setting up over here. But I figured just throw in some regular the rail as well to save on the powered stuff because I've basically run out. Like I have three gold left to my name and six powered rails left. What we've got here is a simple circuit that we can set up above the powered rails there. And all we need to do is power this redstone dust using a lever that's going to come from somewhere else. It's not going to be right here in the end, but all we need to do is flick that on. It powers all of the rails underneath there, allowing the minecarts to travel back and forth and collect the ink. And we're gonna drop off the ink in these hoppers little by little every time they go past, and hopefully that shouldn't back up the system. We could even drop in a couple more hoppers here if we wanted to, but <laughs> this, this thing does produce quite a lot of ink, so there's every chance that we will have a lot of ink to drop off. Of course, once the circuit is switched off, the minecarts will all return to this rest position, and then everything will be hunky-dory. We don't have to worry too much about them getting stuck in the middle of the rails here when we are away from the ink farm. The next step is going to be to set up the slabs above these rails for the killing floor and to put all the minecarts in position. So for that, I brought down a bunch of stone slabs, although we have a ton of stone from digging this out anyway, so bringing that wasn't entirely necessary. Okay, that's all of the hopper minecarts in place. All we need to do is pull the lever and send the fleet off to collect all of that ink. <laughs> and that is enough ink to power all the printers you could ever want but look at that it's all filtering through into the hoppers now and in fact I've actually thrown a bunch of the ink that I've collected manually into there so this system is probably backing up just a little bit here. For our next trick we're going to channel those two output hoppers down into a water stream that's going to sit around here somewhere and that's going to bring all of the drops to us in whatever little AFK room we set up down here. Now, chances are we're going to want to AFK somewhere around the middle range of that farm, so stuff can spawn from the top as well as from the bottom. So it's not gonna be too difficult to set up, but we need to work out roughly where our AFK room is going to be somewhere around the middle of there. And then we can use water streams and bubble columns to transfer the ink up to that holding area and a couple of repeaters linked to this 
line of redstone will be able to control the minecarts remotely from there. And then we basically just have to kind of trust that the whole thing works because it won't be all that visible down here. So with the rails in place and the minecarts all set up, the last thing to do is just to finally slab off this entire floor, making sure that we place this exactly the block above the powered rail so that the minecarts can still drag items through this floor of slabs. And now this entire floor is covered with slabs, but when we pull the lever, the minecarts should run under there and collect all of the ink immediately from underneath there. Fantastic. And that should now all be filtering down into this system. And yep, as we can see, we've got several stacks in there already. Good stuff. Now here's a simple comparator dropper circuit that is a little bit similar to the one I've shown you in the past with pistons and observers, except instead of creating a clock using the observers, we just create a clock using a simple redstone circuit. It's a little bit less compact, but ultimately it's a little bit nicer to build because <laughs> it doesn't rely on the pistons shuttling back and forth all the time. So all we need to do is place a comparator facing into this, run redstone dust around here and into the block behind the dropper like so. We could probably even do this with both of our droppers here and then hit a redstone repeater right there and that's just going to pulse both of these droppers at once and any contents they happen to have specifically this dropper it will use this dropper's contents as an example it's just going to push them straight into the water streams typically both of these will have ink at once so we don't need to worry too much about which one has the most but i'm going to leave that for now because we haven't set up the water streams yet but all i'll need to do is drop in a repeater into that circuit and then the entire thing will run whenever there is ink in the system now for our collection mechanism we need to go across here and i have just opened this out into a massive ravine so we can probably just cover this over with all of the materials we have from digging this place out. And now that we have some water streams set up in here, we need to tackle the problem of water streams only being able to travel a certain distance because we want our drops to be collected at least 16 to 24 blocks away from the body of the actual farm. So in order to do that, we're going to take advantage of the mechanics of ice and I need to go and grab some ice from the farmhouse. So bear with me while I go and do that. So with the ice in place, I can kind of explain what's going on here. We've got packed ice here. It can be regular ice or blue ice, either of those should work just fine but when the items leave this water stream if this is just a regular solid block they're going to come to a stop before they hit the next water stream which we've held back with the use of these signs over here thankfully the ice has enough inertia that it can carry an item from one water stream to another just like this it can kind of flow over the top and continue on into the next water stream and as you can tell this has already happened with a little bit of ink and a couple of resources that i've chucked away while we have been testing out this circuit the problem with this comparator circuit is that it relies on the signal from this side coming in a little bit hotter than the signal that it's putting out from this. And once the dropper starts to fill up the way it has right now, the circuit doesn't actually operate like a clock. It just kind of like ticks once and then stops. But we should be able to empty out those droppers and then it should tick perfectly normally after that. So shouldn't have a problem with that. Now, the next thing to do is really going to be to figure out where exactly our AFK room is going to be because it's probably going to be directly above here, but there's a cave here and we need to sort out the height for it and everything. So I'm going to do a little bit of testing for that off camera, just going to dig out a nice little area where we can stand an AFK and then we'll figure out how to get the drops up there. So with a little bit of trial and error, I figured out that this square here is pretty much the most efficient place for me to stand when it comes to the workings of the farm, making sure that the squid AI will actually function and uh, will move the squids around enough for them to fall out of the traps and into the system. And hopefully the redstone should all be wired up properly. I've actually got a big spiral staircase of redstone down here that leads down to the minecart mechanism. So if I've done this right, I shouldn't really have to worry about anything. All of the ink that was down there already has pretty much made its way up into these hoppers. So I'm going to take a little bit of that out to make some room for more. I'll have to make a couple of chests in here or something. I've got a crafting table on me and a crafting table in front of me. Oh boy, so much stuff. <laughs> it's nice to get the inventory clear and if this is working correctly, all I should need to do is pull this lever to turn on the minecart collection mechanism and we should start to see ink coming up through here. It'll get spat out by those droppers, end up in the water streams. The water streams will carry it to this bubble column. Yes, there we go. We can see it happening. <laughs> the ink sacks are flowing through and should end up here in the hoppers collecting. Fantastic. So that's the collection mechanism set up aside from the storage 
output here. Let's take a look at this shulker box loading system, shall we? I think this is probably going to be a good area to set it up. I've widened it all out. We have these two collection hoppers, which I think I'm actually going to narrow down to a single hopper when it gets input into the shulker box. And the shulker box is going to be placed here. So we'll bring both of these chains of hoppers down like so. And then this one is actually going to feed into the one next to it. And that one is going to be the one that feeds items into the shulker box. It's going to be stationed around here. I think this should work pretty well. Now we haven't had much of a chance in this series to talk about the interactions between shulker boxes, dispensers, and pistons. So we can go into that in a little bit more detail now. Dispensers are actually able to place shulker boxes in the world. Instead of just spitting them out like an item, it actually places this block down for you. And this is really useful for shulker box loading systems because if you have a comparator read the contents of a shulker box to see how much is left in there, once the shulker box gets full, you can have a piston actually break the shulker box for you because being moved around by pistons will break a shulker box. Now I do need to make sure that that's resting on the block above like so. There we go. Okay, so that should be our piston is going to push that down. It's going to push it down into a hopper that we're going to place underneath here. Now the important thing of course is to make sure that the hopper is a block below where the shulker box is. Not like this block here, but that block there. Also, this is the underside of a shulker box texture. <laughs> you don't get to see that very often. Anyway, what we're going to do is make a slab, a stone slab will do, and we can put that over the top of the hopper just to disguise the fact that the hopper is there. But the reason for that is because if we placed a hopper directly underneath the shulker box, that would probably start pulling items out of the shulker box, and that's not something we want. There might be a more sophisticated way of doing this by locking the hopper in the first place until the shulker box is full, but I don't want to mess around with that stuff too much right now. Now I'm going to dig up behind that so we can place the hopper and I need to put a chest at the front here. I feel like we'll probably just pop a chest down there and maybe we'll move the AFK platform down a little bit just so that, yeah, so it's so it's nice and even level with this chest. It shouldn't affect where we're sat in the farm at all. So we can probably pull the floor down a little bit here as well. I'm also gonna change this to be something other than ice <laughs> because I was sliding around on that a whole bunch. Okay, so we're gonna have a hopper facing into this chest. A double chest is a little bit optimistic, isn't it? I don't think we'll need that many. How about just a single chest we'll do for the time being? And then we'll place a hopper facing Facing into the back of that, like so. And now, when the shulker box is broken by the piston, it's going to end up going into the hopper through that slab and it will get picked up by the chest in there. And we'll be able to collect all of the full shulker boxes of ink in this chest here for easy collection and transport to other places. Now, in order to have the piston activate when the shulker box gets full, we have to rely on some behavior of comparators. One of the things comparators can do, one of the things they are known for, is comparing redstone signals. And it can compare a signal that's input on either side to the signal that it's receiving from a full container over here. And if the two do not match up, if it's got a full signal coming in there, then the comparator actually turns off. And it's only when this box becomes full of items, the comparator will find out that the signal coming from there and the signal coming from there are equal and the comparator will light up and it will send a redstone signal. From there, we can send that to the piston, allowing the piston to push the shulker box, breaking it, putting it into the hopper, and this whole system will work flawlessly. Now to make sure the signal gets boosted and gets to the piston, we need to place a repeater there, which is going to actually power this block, allowing us to power some redstone dust that's going to run into that piston up there. So let me hop up here and place a couple more lines of redstone dust. That right there is going to power the piston. It would power thanks to this block, but we're going to add a block on top there because the next thing we want this to do is come up and around and actually power this dispenser slightly afterwards, which is where the repeater comes in again because we need to add a slight delay to this. The repeater is going to be taking the output signal from this block, delaying it by a couple of ticks, and then we're going to pass it back down to this dispenser down here. Now we're going to need a little bit more room to do that but I think that should be nice and straightforward. Two redstone dust there, and we'll need another repeater to go here. I only have a comparator right now, and the comparator might actually do that with the signal, but I think if we just make ourselves a repeater real quick. We'll place a repeater there facing into the dispenser and we're good to go. So now I have to make a bunch of shulker boxes and we'll start filling them up with ink from the farm. And of course, because we're classy, we have to dye them black. So let's see, we can probably fill this up most of the way with the ink that I've already got here. And I should be able to give you guys a full demonstration of this shulker box loader. It's not the most elegant design in the world, but it works. And I think you'll probably be able to find some better designs for shulker box loaders if you look around a little bit. I, <laughs> I may or may not be the least efficient redstoner in the world, but at least my stuff works 
from time to time. I think it should be okay. Okay, so what I've now put into the machine is a shulker box that is mostly full of ink. It's got 31 ink left to go. I just kind of threw that into my own inventory. And once it starts receiving ink from this hopper, once it fills up, it's going to equal the redstone signal coming from this redstone block with a piece of dust on it. That's transmitting a full 15 redstone signal. And that's going to match with the comparator. The comparator will activate. It will activate for a split second, pushing this piston down here and moving the shulker box. Obviously, once the shulker box disappears, the comparator is no longer going to be transmitting the signal, so it will pulse really quickly. And with the delay on this repeater, that will give the dispenser time to fire once the piston has retracted, and it will dispense this empty shulker box in its place. So let's see this in action. I'm going to throw the ink into the hopper at the back here, and hopefully we should see the whole system work in just a couple of seconds time. The piston will push it down, it'll get picked up by the hopper, and this whole thing should function. Now, there we go. And that is directly into the chest, full of ink and ready to get going. And the new shulker box is in place. Now, unfortunately, shulker boxes can only be placed by dispensers facing upright like that, as though they were placed on the ground. So we can't right click on this now to open it because it doesn't have space for the top to open up like that. So you're not gonna be able to check the contents of the shulker box while this is all in action. But believe me, it should be working fine. Now let's actually test this, <laughs> I think. We should be seeing some drops come up here relatively soon if this system works. Yep, there we go. Wow, that was quick. I'm really happy with this farm. I think it's going pretty well. But yeah, for all intents and purposes, that should now be filling up. And the hopper in the back is actually filling up faster than I think it can feed items into the shulker box because we've got two hoppers feeding into one there. But I think... All of this should be filling up relatively quickly, about as fast as the hopper can fill it. And the, the drops are just flowing in constantly. This is great. I think this is working out really, really well. So hopefully we should be able to AFK overnight for multiple shulker boxes of ink. And that is going to be all the ink we will ever need. I'm going to be building a lot with Dark Prismarine. So a full shulker box of ink is basically the equivalent of a full shulker box of Dark Prismarine, as long as we have the Prismarine shards available to us, which I know we do at this point. So I'm happy. I think that's going to be great. We're going to be able to dye as much stuff black as we want, <laughs> including some more shulker boxes to go in the system here, because we obviously want it to be able to pump out as many ink sacks as it can. So yeah, I think I might go AFK overnight and see quite how many shulker boxes we can fill up here. If I can get nine shulker boxes of ink sacks from this farm, I will be a happy man and we will probably never need this whole farm again. But in the meantime, maybe I could do a little bit of tidying up around here as well. I could probably make this whole thing look a little bit more presentable in the meantime. Well, you can forget about going AFK overnight because I just went AFK for as long as it took me to edit this video that you've just been watching. Uh, this is recorded after I've edited all of that together. It took me about an hour, maybe like an hour and a bit. And since then, we have acquired three full shulker boxes of ink sacks. Each one of those contains, I think, 2,700 items is roughly what you get from a, from a full thing. No, wait, hang on. That's probably not right because that'd be... Yeah, my math is off there. 1,500. It's about 1,500 items per shulker box. So that's maybe like 5,000 in total just from those. And that's not even counting the one I used for a demonstration earlier, which is still over there. So we have basically like 5,000 ink in about the space of an hour, maybe an hour and a bit. And this one is already going to be filling up with more. There's more ink coming into the system. There is a creeper up here who seems to have come up from the caves below. He He's stuck in the bubble column and he keeps looking down at me creepily, which is a bit weird. But yeah, this thing is working flawlessly and I'm so, so happy. Obviously, I haven't had time to decorate because I wanted to edit this video together and I wanted to check on it before I went AFK overnight. Did not need to. And I think we're going to wrap up the episode there. I will do a little bit of decorating around here, but... We now have like 7,000 or so ink sacks with this one included as well. So that is absolutely flawless. And I'm really happy that this farm came together as well as it did. I hope you have enjoyed another two-part episode on the channel. And please do let me know in the comments if you like this kind of format, because some of these farms are going to require a lot of work. And I don't want to just leave a farm for ages and then have to come back to it a few episodes later. I like doing these two-part formats. So hopefully you guys do as well. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye for now.